previously on Balls. Okay, David, uh, still haven't paid the electricity account, so the lights are still off at the Campisi household. They're actually on, believe it or not. What's wrong with you? It looks like you're in the darkness there, David. Well, I haven't had a shave for about a week, so I thought I'd just hide myself. <laughs> I think we've paid David's bill since August, September. We're sorting that out, by the way. Sorry. Uh, maybe that's why he hasn't paid the water and lights yet. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the bill to come through. Yeah. All right, we'll sort it out for you, David. It's uh, still very early in the year. You know that. Uh, yeah, know. Welcome back to uh, Balls Radio. Welcome back to the new year. Um, I don't know if you know, but we're going to be on FM in Joburg from next month. Is that right? Jeez, yeah. That's a big one. You can't swear anymore. He doesn't swear. He does. He's no. Australian. You, I never, ever swear. I go on Twitter and I abuse people for using bad language. Yeah. Swear. He doesn't no. swear. Pinky swear. Yeah. What has David been up to since uh, we last spoke to him? He's been on uh, a couple of a couple of t- uh, Twitter tirades. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Next question. <laughs> Look, come on, if we can't get the exclusive from you in your slot on Balls Video Radio, then, you know. Okay, look. Uh, and you've been irritating about, the uh, palms again. Yeah. Female journalist, why is a girl writing about rugby she's got no idea? And I copped a lot of crap about that. But it's, it's quite interesting. There's a lot of support as well. Um, and the next one was about Robbie Deans. And there's one about um, a lady in Australia that was caught smoking while pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and then what is the one with the, uh, with the Lions players? Ah, right, the uh, British Lions. What happened was, I don't know if you saw, uh, Gatlin, the coach, came out and said, uh, if he picks too many England players, basically it's not a great idea for the Lions because normally Australia, New Zealand, South Africans hate the Poms. So that gives us more incentive to beat the Lions. What? So that's what he said uh, last week. And about two weeks before that, Jim Telford came out and said, the English are arrogant. So the Times in London wanted my view, and I sort of gave them a view about what I thought about the English. And I thought they'd known that already. Sorry? I thought they knew that already. Well, they just got to rein- reinforce it. You know, they're pretty slow over there. So <laughs> I wrote this article, and I said at the end, I um, uh, talked about the British Lions, 89, when I made a mistake, and I said, you never let me forget that. But straight, quite strangely, that in 2001, the person who lost you the game was Martin Johnson, who didn't catch the line out in the last minutes. But I said, you never blame him. So I sort of added that in. And then the biggest one was about all the gold medals they won at the Olympics. But, um, you know, they actually poached a lot of coaches around the world, had a few other runners running for them from other countries. So I thought that, you know, they should have won a gold medal for recruitment. But I still love you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's been the, uh, the Campisi break since uh, November when we last chatted to him and uh, now back again uh, just a, obviously not a, a, a lengthy ch- a chat today but uh, just to sort of say and uh, I know everyone's going to go why are the Aussies starting before us and they're trying to be different no they're not it's because of the British and Irish Lions that they've had to reschedule some of their games to fit everything in this year in another congested rugby calendar but it's underway uh, and um, well they went according to my predictions I picked uh, the Brumbies uh, to win their game and I picked the Rebels to win their game as well, and that's how they panned out. Yeah, I think the Rebels, um, I've watched a lot of that game, and it's unfortunately it's going to be another sort of defensive year, but it's quite interesting how there's a few tries scored by um, guys just kicking the ball through behind the defence. The wingers are so flat these days, so there's no cover. But obviously the, um, the Brumbies at home are always going to be hard to beat. The Reds just have... I think they're waiting for Quade Cooper to do something, but there's no Genia there, no mm. Hall wall there. And again, you've got two centres for the Reds that are the ball. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to defend. Nothing's really changed from last year. Um, and the thing is, I don't think the, the Reds have really recruited well because we haven't got any players. So I think they're stuck with the same team. Where the Brumbies had Pocock, but he wasn't really noticeable um, that, in the game. And, um, you know, so I think I was quite surprised towards the end of the, the result, but... Uh, you know, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with again, the Brumbies. Uh, but the Reds are still going to struggle. Yeah, I think the Brumbies are going to go very close this year. And uh, they've got a quality coach in Jake White. He's had a bit of time to work with him now. And if you can kind of compare that. You know, I think he knows what, what to expect. He knows what he wants to do with sides. Yeah. Maybe compare it a little bit with Robbie Deans. Is that forever now to work with a Wallaby side? Um, and doesn't seem to be going anywhere with him. Whereas Jake has taken this Brumby side, a young side, and... Uh, and moulded them into something very dangerous this year. Well, you're biased because he's South African, that's all. And he's also won a World Cup, David. Yes, yeah, so what? Yeah, well, he knows how, he, I think he knows what he's doing. 
You think so? Yeah, I think, well, I know so. But you reckon how He's got a World Cup medal. Sorry, the Brumbies. Okay. Do you want to put some wages down this uh, no, no, early stage of the season? I'm a simple question. What about a wage? I'm telling you the, how far do you reckon the Brumbies will get? I reckon the Brumbies will get to the final. You think so? Yeah. Darren, Darren, Darren. What Darren, do you think will happen with him? Well, the problem is going to be if they lose two or three of their key players, there's no one else in Australia. We haven't got any players. No backup. That's the scary part about rugby in Australia. Um, get we some more South forward. Africans. The Force and the Rebels have been the two teams that have had the most players come back and forth. Um, and they're coming, they came 13th and 14th, basically. So, yeah, but any side could lose players through injury and... and, and... No, no, oh, look, I, I agree, but I'm just saying that, yeah. unfortunately, the Brumbies are... The players they've got, some of the players, they're, they're doing very well. I think they're playing above their weights, if you, if you like to hear say that. They're a very good team, but... When it comes to the big guns, when it gets like last year, they really haven't got the match winners um, that the the Crusaders have got. Carter, they got Dags. There's you know those sort of plays that you need to step up when the pressure's on. Uh, yes, they didn't. They stumbled a bit last year, but again this year it's another season. It's a long season. So if you lose two or three players, I mean that that's that's the big telling blow in this competition. You know, one day the teams are very close, but on the day you turn up, you turn up. Uh, would you like to put your stall out on who you think will win this competition, or do you want to wait till next week's games no, and I, see what everyone's I doing? Think, uh, I think that uh, New South Wales is going to be a team that's going to go well. I think they'll make the semis. We Again, they've been different. saying that for 15 years. No, but it's a bit different now. What we've done is... <laughs> Have they ever made a semi-final? Can you just let me talk? <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be one of these years where yeah. it's going to have to put your hand up if you get answered? <laughs> No, I think what they've done is they've actually recruited Michael Checker, who was over in France and did well with Leinster. Um, they've got uh, a rugby league recruit who played Aussie Rules last year. Um, and I'm keeping in touch with Drew Mitchell, and he says that, you know, they're, they're starting to throw the ball around like they used to do instead of just boring, tactical, kick the ball. So that'll be one team. The Brumbies will be well, but I think the Crusaders, you can never leave them out. Um, and I think probably... The Stormers mm-hmm. um, or the Kings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you mentioned them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Johnny, Dave. this is your. Oh, yes, my moment. moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's the, I promise you, the Kings make. Have you put some money on the Kings, John? Darren, I don't have any money, but I said that they said they would take <laughs> so credit card. Put a five rand on them, and I promise you'll, you'll win a million. Yeah, yeah, I've got a funny feeling that uh, you'll make good talk? money. Yeah, sorry, sorry, David. David. What? They're going to struggle. The Kings are going to struggle in a tough competition. To enter them into a competition like this is just bizarre. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> They'll take 100 points from the Crusaders in Christchurch. That's yep. what I say. Yeah. What is that? They lose two or three players. They've already lost 12 through injuries. <laughs> but I'd like to know, how can you get injured in pre-season training? What yeah. are they doing these days to get injured? I don't know. I've, that's bizarre. I mean, I was saying, what is the value of having pre-season in, in the first case? Because you're winning by 50, 60, 70 points. And uh, and you but you walking away from the stadium with uh, two of your key players gone. A truck, and you go and you play in a style of rugby that you're not going to play when it gets later on down the track. I mean, yeah. Look, I mean, is it really necessary to actually have preseason games? Is there no other way of doing it? Where? Uh, but didn't the, didn't the Kings actually lose twelve players in training? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I've. <laughs> well, yeah, look, Butch James. Butch James hurt himself at training, didn't he? he hurt his knee. Yeah, but he's with the Sharks again. Yeah, so I mean, it's just, you know, but I, it's early, it's going to be a long season, and um, I just think that it's, you know, the team that's basically got the same team at the end of the competition is going to win because it's <laughs> very tough. The Chiefs, obviously, without Sonny Bill Williams, will be a bit different yeah. team, but they'll got the same coach, same Highlanders. Sort of same. Highlanders are looking good this the year. The Highlanders have uh, recruited Brad Thorne's back, yeah. uh, who obviously was over in France. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. And the Blues have just, I think the Blues transfer list was about, I think they got rid of one team and brought a whole new team. Yeah. The amount of players they got rid of. So there's been a lot of back and forth. A lot of the players gone over to France. So it's going to be a tough competition. Obviously in South Africa, the Stormers, you'd have to say, would be up there as well. Again, injury-wise. Um, the Sharks, you never know. I think the Cheetahs are going to struggle. Uh, they'll, they've got some good players, but they, at that top level, they'll... They're going to struggle again when it gets to the big boys. Yeah, uh, Camper, what what are your thoughts on on Sonny Bill Williams' uh, exploits out off the rugby field in the boxing ring? And well, it's funny Cooper. because I actually watched the uh, replay. I think it was last week, and the commentator said, "Welcome to this World Championship bout with twelve rounds." 
So I just tweeted, I said, well, the guy said on TV it was 12 rounds. Why was it 10? Mm. Can anyone explain that? No, it wasn't. I love Bounce's tweet about the rematch. It was happening in Durban, funnily enough. He said uh, confirmation that Sonny Bill Williams and Francois Buda will fight in Durban for a rematch, which will be plus or minus 12 rounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's a joke. I, it was interesting. What I heard also, that um, there was a bit of try a bit of a payoff. To for Bolter to go to get um, to lose. Really yeah, Ach, there's all kinds of. going left, right, and center around this, so who knows? Just a joke. They've got a rematch, another crowd, another brigade. I'm sure they yeah, sp- money And then another yeah. go 10 rounds. Share the money, and that's it. They've made yeah, their cash. Exactly. Yeah. And, they just stick to their sports, and really. The, and the winner fights against Quade Cooper. Boom. Game over. Interesting. At least, at least the only good thing is Quade Cooper and Sonny got the same tattoos on the same arms. Uh, that's That's <laughs> one thing. And the money's same trailer as well, isn't it? I think so. Similar kind of trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Well, he didn't uh, play well. Cooper struggled on Saturday, huh? Eh? Uh? Cooper struggled on Saturday against the Brumbies. Yeah, he must stick, stick to boxing. He's standing too deep away behind his advantage line. Six Nations is the same. Can't talk about that quickly. Nah. Six Nations. Everyone's playing so far behind the advantage line, and it's very good defensive rugby. This is you a little. This is a little toe in the water just to uh, set the tone for the year, David. So uh, we've got your predictions. Uh, I'm, I'm just, by the way, I'm predicting uh, Sharks and Stormers get through to the final four. Uh, Brumbies and Highlanders. Oh, Highlanders. Yes, I think it's going to be those four. And the Crusaders? Not going to make it. It's going to be what the big the surprise. Balls? The Bulls have got a good team? Not yet. Next not year. Yet? Next year, maybe. The year after. Not yet. Not this year yet. Uh, we'll see. Nah. You can't just go on your passionate support of the Bulls every year. You've got to, I mean, you've got to think they're still building their side. They're still getting their quality going. I heard about their uh, coaching uh, seminar, seminar last week. It was very good. Yeah. No, they've got yeah. good, good structures going there, and they've got a, a good setup there, but uh, I think they're still one year too short. They did everything, they did everything on the, uh, the big screen, not one bit of on-field activity. Oh, that was a sarcastic comment, was it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on, Darren, you're getting slow. What's wrong? Oh, I don't know, David. I thought maybe Long you'd like, tone, you, you, like <laughs> mellowed in your old age, but you haven't. You're, 50, you're not in your 50s now, you know, Dave. We've got to, we've got to take it into account. Yeah, I know, mate. Yeah. But anyway, uh, how's <laughs> How's the little boy? How's it going? Uh, all good, thank you. Yeah, he's 100%. Yeah, every, right, every, right. Everyone's good. Everyone seems to be through all their troubles the no, last year. Yeah. Uh, send love to the family. And uh, listen, by the way, I think what you need to do is speak to the guys because Val V are doing a feature on a Thursday called uh, Wine of the Week. Yep. I think we should actually try and combine that with, uh, with Campos uh, Monday. Yeah, why not? Uh, and yeah. uh, it'll get you get you a case of or two of Valdiv down there, so that you, when you are doing your flush out with us, you can also sip on a sip on a glass or two of Rake Netling's uh, very oh, special cool. wine. Yeah, All right. You're You're the boss. Cool. We'll have a chat about that uh, when we speak to the guys. What you got to do is just spank the guys. Run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Dave. We'll chat to you next Monday. Guys. Bye. Ciao, Bye. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Here we go, Bye. David. Campisi joining us on Skype. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have him back. Nice to see the holiday is over. Yeah, David. 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 Nice to see the holidays haven't dulled his uh, no. his wit and sharp and tongue. Wit and venom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All <laughs> right. I love him on FM. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, yeah, especially some of the, uh, the, the local rugby fans are really going to love him. Mm. <laughs> this is Ball's Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African time. Balls.co.za.